Hello and welcome once again to this Sunday reflection. Yep, you're still stuck with me, but I promise you for the next two Sundays, you'll have my colleague, Reverend Julia. Thankfully, she is over her COVID. So uh, you can listen to a different voice uh, for the next two Sundays. But for Sunday, the 17th of July, um, you've got me. So welcome once again into my study here in the manse. If you can hear a funny sound in the background, a bit like a heartbeat, it isn't my heart beating. I would just like to let you know the dishwasher is running in the kitchen and my study is off the kitchen. So that's what you can hear. It's the kind of, um, oh, well, I don't really know. Anyway, it's the noise the dishwasher makes. So if you think you can hear a heartbeat, it isn't. So glorious weather oh my goodness uh my tomatoes are getting really excited and they're turning red daily so i'm really pleased with that that's good i expect it's been a little too warm for some of you over this past week but we mustn't moan absolutely not uh because the sunshine is so lovely <coughs> excuse me so lovely to see isn't it yes uh if only i had the time to uh be out in it a bit more you know, um, I was out in it uh, today, absolutely, because I had to go and take a, a funeral, a graveside funeral. So I was glad that it was nice weather, although it was very windy, very windy, <clears throat> but glorious. Oh, in the middle of the Dales, looking out, um, what a sight. If you're going to be buried anywhere, this is a pretty good place to be buried. So... This week, uh, what are we thinking about? Well, I thought it might be really good, um, as I've looked at the readings, uh, to think about making the most of our encounters with God. Making the most of our encounters with God. So on Monday this past week, I went into Reith School, where I am the chaplain. It's a Methodist school. And I went in to join them for their assembly. The head teacher was leading the assembly and over a few weeks they have been exploring as a school the themes of kindness, talking to trusted friends and helping each other out. He told them about Jimmy Carter, who had been president of the United States and had won the Nobel Peace Prize. But more importantly, Jimmy Carter was known for phoning up ordinary Americans and saying that he would like to come to their house for tea. So the head teacher asked the children if the president of America was coming to their house for tea, what might they want to do in preparation? We had a wonderful show of hands, all deciding that it was necessary to clean and dust and tidy and polish and definitely tidy their bedrooms, make a cake and so on. Then the head teacher asked what they would do if God was coming to tea. Most responses to this question were the same as the previous one. But one little girl said, welcome him. Making the most of our encounters with God Hospitality links both the Old and the New Testament readings today. But perhaps there is more to hospitality than welcome. So we're going to explore those readings. So first of all, I'm going to read from the Old Testament. Don't do this very often, do I? Um, so the Old Testament reading is Genesis. So the first book of the Bible, easy to find. Genesis chapter 18. And it is verses 1 to the first half of verse 10. If you ever see it written down in the lectionary, it'll say 10a. 10a just means where the, sen where the first sentence ends, that's where you stop reading. So, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to 10a. And today, yep, I'm using 
the New Living Translation. So hopefully if you want to follow along, you found it in your Bible. The Lord appeared again to Abraham while he was camped near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day about noon, as Abraham was sitting at the entrance to his tent, he suddenly noticed three men standing nearby. He got up and ran to meet them, welcoming them by bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while my servants get some water to wash your feet. Let me prepare some food to refresh you. Please stay a while before continuing on your journey. All right, they said. Do as you have said. So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, Quick, get three measures of your best flour and bake some bread. Then Abraham ran out to the herd and chose a fat calf and told a servant to hurry and butcher it. When the food was ready, he took some cheese curds and milk and the roasted meat, and he served it to the men. As they ate, Abraham waited on them there beneath the trees. Where is Sarah, your wife, they asked him. In the tent, Abraham replied. Then one of them said, About this time next year, I will return and your wife Sarah will have a son. So that's the Old Testament reading. So now we're going to turn into the New Testament. So we're going to turn into the Gospel of Luke. So we have Matthew, Mark, then Luke at the beginning of the New Testament. And it's Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. So just give you a few seconds to turn into Luke. Luke 10, beginning at verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are so upset over all these details. There is really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and I won't take it away from her. So there we have the readings for Sunday the 17th of July. My first appointment as an RAF chaplain was at Cranwell in Lincolnshire. We had a senior chaplain, plus three more chaplains of various lengths of service, including me, the newbie. I was the only woman chaplain and the first one ever at RAF Cranwell, the flagship of the organisation. A large part of the role involved one-to-one -one sessions with RAF personnel who came with a whole host of issues and problems, some in a very bad way. And being able to speak to the Padre was hugely valued. Most would make an appointment through the chaplaincy clerk, although we often had drop-ins. Interestingly, it became clear that most found it easier to speak to a woman. So I was very busy. Too busy was the truth. 
and many a time I would rush back to the office only to find the clerk had booked in people to see me back to back and she would be panicking that she had others that she could not squeeze in. On these occasions I would glance across at my colleagues closed office doors to see what they were doing and there was one who always seemed to be reading a book. Sat quietly on a comfy seat in the corner of his office, reading a book, having requested not to be disturbed because he was taking some reflection time. It was on these occasions that I knew how Martha felt in our gospel reading for today. I often wanted to march into his office and tell him to get off his you-know-what and help out a bit. Jesus and his disciples have come to tea. Now this is wonderful, isn't it, for Mary and Martha? Jesus and his disciples have come to tea. It's wonderful, but putting on a meal for 13 extra people takes a lot of work. And Martha, well, she's a doer. She shows her love through doing. So it must be perfect, this meal. Everything has to be just so. But her lazy sister just sits there at Jesus's feet listening to him. Quite rightly, Jesus should have told Mary to get up and help, but he doesn't. Ouch, that must have hurt Martha. Why is Mary so special? Well, Mary isn't any more special than Martha. Both are loved by God. But because Martha is so caught up in her doing, she is unable to pay her guest any attention. She's too busy to make the best of this encounter with God. Whereas Mary is giving God her entire attention. Jesus makes the point that hospitality is not about good meal preparation, but listening to Jesus. Interestingly, in Reith School on Monday, the head teacher went on to say to the children that God knows everything about us and that they could speak to God and ask for help at any time, not wait until they have put their house in order. He was helping them to explore the theme of spiritual encounter. In fact, he asked me to sort of drop in any comments at any time. And so when we were talking about God knowing them, I explained that there was a wonderful passage in the Bible which tells us that God knew us before we were born, knew everything about us, even when we were in our mummy's tummies, which is what I used to explain to them when we were first growing. And I remember two of the children just went, wow, that's amazing. Exploring spiritual encounter. So who, I wonder, had the spiritual encounter with Jesus? Was it Martha or was it Mary? I think we can probably answer that, can't we? Hospitality, it would seem, is not just about welcome then. It's also about listening and responding to God. The Old Testament story gives us a different encounter with God. This is God in the unexpected. Whereas Martha and Mary knew that Jesus was coming to tea, Abraham had no idea that he was about to encounter God. But he knew that it was a spiritual encounter immediately. He had been sitting 
quietly at ease. We have this vision of Abraham sitting quietly at the entrance to his tent, just having that kind of peaceful, reflective time. He's quietly at ease when he notices a holy presence. Verse 3, did you note? It said, my Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here a while. Yet we're told he sees three men and he responds, my Lord. He instantly knows this is a spiritual encounter. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, make a meal fit for God. Now, we need to gloss over how long it would have taken to make that meal. It would have taken hours, wouldn't it? But that's not the point. They make a meal fit for God, but note that they do not share that meal. In fact, Sarah is not present when the guests eat and Abraham stands and watches. He gives his honoured guests his full attention. He's fully present in this encounter. There is no evidence that Abraham shares anything of himself with his guests. He isn't even distracted by eating himself. He merely welcomes and listens, responding with his full attention. Abraham and Sarah are old and all hope of them having a son is long gone. But this is Abraham's deep desire and God knows this. So before the visitors leave and the encounter is over, the promise is made that Sarah will have a son. Now, if you read on, and most of us know this story, we will know that despite her laughing disbelief and against all the odds, and indeed probably against all reason and what we know about women's bodies and medical science, even today, that is exactly what happens. Sarah gives birth to a son and they share the joy of their son Isaac. We can encounter God in the most unexpected places and through the most unexpected people. The challenge is to make the most of their of those encounters. Abraham did. Mary did. Martha, she just got so caught up in serving God, there was no time to be with God. Maybe that is a lesson for us all. Amen. So, I won't see you for two weeks. Uh, take care of yourselves. Enjoy the glorious weather. Uh, make the most of it. And look for God. Make the most of those encounters. Don't be too busy serving God that you've no time for God. God bless you. See you again soon.